Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome along to our preview of the Alliance League hurling final between Waterford and Cork this coming Sunday at Semple Stadium. And again, welcome to all our viewers on GA.ie, GA TV, and also on the RTE player. We'll be giving the viewers at home their opportunity to put questions to our panellists a little bit later on. So if anyone has any questions for our panellists today, Pork Mahoney and Lorca McLaughlin from Cork and Waterford, you can just tweet us your question and just include the hashtag Alliance Leagues, and we'll put the best of those questions to the lads a little bit later on. Now, to be completely honest with you, first and foremost, I had these two sides written off very early in the league season. I think it was the, the second weekend in uh, Cork, beaten by, let's call them a, a weaker Kilkenny team. And, uh, and, and there was a lot of bad press going around about uh, Cork at that time as well. And uh, Waterford, well, they drew on their opening match against Limerick. And I was actually driving my car through the Midlands for their second game, Listen to the first half of Waterford and Leash on the radio, and all I'll say is that the Leash commentators were getting pretty excited that they were about to take a big scalp, so a, a flaky enough first half for them, but they did turn it around. I uh, don't know what Jerick McGrath said to Porrick and the lads at half time, but they, they ran out easy winners. But it just goes to show the unpredictability of the league this year. It really has been a breath of fresh air at uh, the hurling this season. I'm, I'm sure as well many people in this room, not looking at anyone in particular, John down there, Maybe wrote off Waterford as well over the course of this, no? <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking to the lads very shortly, but first, some formalities. Let's hear from our sponsor, from Brenda Murphy, CEO of Alliance Ireland. Let's round of applause for him. Thanks, Darren. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, and fans tuning in from, from around the world on GA.ie, on behalf of Alliance, I'd like to welcome you all to Coke Park as we preview the Alliance Hurling League Division 1 final. I'd like to pay a particular welcome to Lorcan McLaughlin from Cork and Porik uh, Mahoney from Waterford, who have joined us here today. Both players were involved in thrilling semi-finals, and it's fantastic to see Waterford coming through Division 1B uh, with a shot at lifting the Division 1 title. I'm delighted to once again welcome our digital guests who are joining us live on GAA.ie. Gaelic games enjoy more popularity than ever before. Our preview of the Alliance Football League uh, final last Monday was viewed across the globe, including the UK, Australia, US, Norway, and even Bangladesh. It is now possible for our global fans to never miss a moment of, of Alliance League action by tuning in on GEA Go, with whom we are in partnership. Before I hand you back to Darren, I want to thank the media for your insightful and expert analysis. The GEA for another season of partnership, collaboration, and friendship and finally, I encourage all the fans tuning in on GA.ie to put your questions to our guests using hashtag Alliance Leagues. Gaurav Mahagwev. Thanks a million, Brendan. I have to take this opportunity as well to congratulate you and the rest of your team for the promotion of the, the league hurling and uh, football over the last couple of months. You really have had a, a, a great comp two great competitions in the hurling and football. Maybe the, the two football finals yesterday were a little bit disappointing given the, the outcomes of them, but well done to everyone concerned. Now let's meet our two very special guests. This is going to be a fascinating match coming up on Sunday. Obviously they're meeting again at the Championship in a couple of weeks' time, but this is a wonderful appetiser for, for what's coming up. Uh, Cork looking for the first league title since 1998. Waterford back in the final, hoping to win their first league title since 2007. And of course then we have as well those contrasting styles the sharpshooters of Cork and uh, Waterford who very, seem to have nailed down their defensive style this year and I'm sure they're going to both have a big impact in lots in, in, the, in the season to come. So let's hear from them. Let's uh, hear a round of applause for Lorca McLaughlin from Cork and Waterford's sharpshooter, Pork Mahoney. <laughs> just to remind everyone at home again, you can tweet your question to the chaps, just include hashtag Alliance Leagues and have them up here on my iPad and we'll put them to, to you as we're going along. I'm delighted to know that they're floating in, lads, and one or two little difficult ones as well. So uh, you, you've had your warning. But, Pori, can I, can I start with you? Hand on heart, did you expect to be here sitting in front of us looking ahead to a league final when you were sitting down with the rest of the team at the start of the year? Well, no, I suppose at the start of the year we set out with one main goal and that was to beat Limerick in our first game and... Um, since that then we've to just taken it every game as it comes one step as, at a time and obviously now that we're here we're very much looking forward to it but you know, at the start of the year we didn't really set out to win the National League so um, it was, was it mentioned at all in, the, in any of the meetings? 
No, oh, look, I suppose when we went back training in November, our sights were firmly set on beating Limerick because we knew if we lost to Limerick, that was our league campaign more or less over mm. because we couldn't qualify for 1A. Obviously, one, obviously getting promoted to 1A was certainly an aim, but to win a league wasn't really a, a goal that we set out at the start of the year. And Lorcan, what about you? I'm sure you weren't thinking about league finals when you were 12 points down to Dublin in the, in the semi-finals. In, inspirational comeback. What, what was behind it all? Um, look, I think we felt there was a big performance in us at half time. You know, we hadn't really turned up in the first half, but um, you know, uh, sport is unpredictable. It's funny, you know. I think once we started, I think Dublin never really put us to the sword. They never really got that goal in the second half that really put us away. So they kind of left us back into the game at certain periods. They gave us, you know, I suppose freeze and that, and the boys obviously Patrick Hargan ran up a huge score. So they they gave us enough to keep us in the game. And then when it came down the home stretch, you know, a couple of lads showed huge leadership to to get us over the line. I remember just watching Jimmy Barry Murphy on the line. You could see just the passion and what it meant to come back and to actually to win that game. How much confidence does a performance like that give you as a squad? Um, I suppose, look, to, in the end, it's, it gives you huge confidence and gives you a huge lift. But I suppose from the other side of it, you know, you can't afford to be giving teams um, that much of a lead because you just won't peg them back. And I suppose, you know, look at look at the All Ireland semi final last year against Tipperary. We failed, we failed to peg back that lead, and it'll be the same on Sunday if we give Watford that much of a lead. So we're fully aware that we a lot to work on but um, again it's a huge confidence booster knowing that you know the team has shown that character of getting us through you know pegging back 12 point lead mm, okay let's go through some of the tweets and again just to remind everyone watching tweet us your questions hashtag alliance leagues uh, a couple of easy ones for the lads to, to get into all this uh, one for for Pori. kevy wants to to know what would it mean for waterford to win a first league title since 2007 yeah, look, it'd be absolutely massive. Um, I suppose with the panel of players there, I think there's three lads who have a league who were there in 2007, and for the rest of us, it's our first league final. So, and for for all of us, really, it'd be one of the most, I suppose, prestigious um, medals that we've probably ever won for Watford. Where were you in 2007? Were you still in school? I was 2007. I was, yeah, I was in Dallas High College. So yeah. yeah. So. Um, I would have been up there looking on up in Turles. Yeah, sure. And uh, Lorcan, obviously, th there's the, the small little asterisks over, over Cork in terms of league titles. 1998, it's a long, long time. Have you, have you any idea why Cork, you know, one of the most successful teams in the country, but yet haven't had as much league success as they would have in the championship? Yeah, I suppose, look, I suppose going into Sunday, it's a huge incentive. Um, I suppose it's hard to put your finger on it. Um, like Cork have won all Ireland titles um, between then and now, but... Um, look, you know, Kilkenny have been so dominant in the last number of years, Tipperary have been dominant as well, so I think more and more teams have bridged the gap and maybe that's why you're seeing a freshness in the league so far, but again, come the championship, you know, Tipperary and Kilkenny will be, the, I suppose, the favourites for the, the main co major competitions. Okay, and uh, this, uh, a question coming to you from the Cork Independent from Dara Clancy. Lorcan, how important is it for Cork to get league silverware in terms of championship preparation and how do you rate Cork's chances for the All-Ireland? Um, oh, it's huge. Look, I think our main, pri our primary objective at the start of the league was to retain our 1A status. Then, I suppose, to shorten the gap between the league and championship. I know we find ourselves in a National League final, so it's a huge incentive to go on and win it. Um, you know, every competition you win, it builds and builds confidence. Like last year, we won a Munster title for the first time since, you know, it was 2006. So that was huge again. It's important to get the public behind us and that belief was there. Obviously, the, our display in Crow Park against Tipperary in the All Ireland semi final was hugely disappointing. So it's again, it's another opportunity to try and get that belief and get that confidence up again. Now, we have a question here from Sean Cronin. He's with breakingnews.ie, and he's a question for both of you, but maybe we'll start with yourself, Porig. Will there be an element of shadow boxing this weekend ahead of the upcoming first round meeting in the Championship? An obvious question, I suppose. No, look, as I said at the start of the year, we've been really focusing on every game as it comes, and we're obviously just focusing on this Sunday now. And um, after Sunday, we'll reflect, and we'll obviously we'll have a few areas that we need to improve on. Hopefully there won't be too many and then we'll be worrying about the Munster Championship game. So you tell us you're not going to be holding back then on Sunday? No, look, we'd love to win Sunday. Yeah. What about you? Oh, it's likewise. Look, I don't think either team are looking beyond Sunday. You know, it's a national competition. The silverware up for grabs. You know, both teams will go all out to try and win it and then you approach the next game as it comes. But um, certainly I don't think, I think both teams are fully focused on Sunday's game. Okay. And uh, another question here for you, Porik. It's from Sully. Did you notice a big difference in standards between Division 1A and Division 1B this year? Um, no, look, I suppose... 
at start of every at start of the year, like we were, we knew we were going to be playing Limerick, and th- so that was obviously, a, and they were only poking the ball away from I suppose when beating the lads there last year in the Munster final, and obviously they ran Kilkenny then in all Ireland semi final, so we knew that that was going to be highly competitive game, and then since that then, I suppose we've obviously been building a bit of momentum, and then leading in, it obviously did help us coming into the Galway game, and then into the Tipperary game, but no, I think the standard in Division One B is certainly nearly up there with the 1A standard, yeah. Do you know Brian O'Hearn? No. No. Oh, you, somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's lots of more coming in for you. He wants to know the Jaffa cake. Is it a biscuit or a cake? <laughs> <laughs> more, more serious one for you, uh, Lorcan. And uh, this is from our old friend, Mr. Nasha, a friend here to Allianz Elite Press Conferences. He says, if you had to choose two teammates to be with on a desert island, who would they be? Oh, <laughs> That's typical national of a question like that. Um, no, I'll, I'll sit in the fence here and I'll say, do you know, if it was a team holiday, I'd bring them on. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone you dread marking? Um, in training? Um, I suppose, look, all the forwards, they, they all have their own, I suppose, strengths. You know, Patrick Horgan is obviously a clinical in front of goals. Luke O'Farrell has great pace. Conor Lehan has great pace. So, you know, everyone is, is challenging in their own ways. And I think, you know, that's the, that's the big thing about inter-county training. And I suppose Farrell could be the same. You know, every, every night you go out, you have, to, you have to be ready to go full, full tilt because lads can, you know, lads can really cut loose. So, um, all the forwards uh, bring something that's challenging and you know that's that that's the exciting thing about training it's the exciting thing about playing these big you know national competitions these big games is every day you go to you're going to be under pressure and you're playing the best players in the country now maybe put that question to you as well Porik. yeah no it looks similar to lock on i suppose um in Watford, all the backs are you know if they're if they're playing i suppose at intercounty level they're going to be highly competitive but the likes of noel connor's shane foy's tied to work you're not going to get an inch off them in training and mm. As I said, as t- our Lord Cohen said, it's great preparation then, like going into to play big league games and big championship games because you're competing yourself. Obviously, you know, you're trying to get into starting 15, first of all, and then there's lads competing to get into the 26, you know, so it's um, highly competitive in training. So I suppose they're all, they're all as tough as each other. Keep your questions coming in to us on Twitter, hashtag Alliance Leagues. Uh, they're flooding in. Some more of them now. Deirdre Fagan. Some of the reaction to Sky and GA Go's coverage of the hurling championship were hilarious last year. Has hurling a future outside of Ireland? Um, oh, for me, yeah, I think so. Definitely, without a doubt. You know, I think the more coverage it gets um, internationally and worldwide, I think it's, it can only be good for the game. Um, you know, we have a unique game here in Ireland, and it's great. Uh, that we'll always remember that our grassroots will be here in Ireland, but you know, there's a far bigger world out there as well. And I think it's great to be promoting the games. You know, people who have gone to Australia, America, you know, even the UK, the more teams that are out there, I think the better. And, and I suppose to promote the game itself, you know, it can only be, can only be a positive. Mm. Another one for you, actually, Lorcan. Has Conor O'Sullivan's departure from the squad affected the mood in the camp? That's from Owen McNeil. Um, look, I think you know Conor's a great guy. He was a great guy to have around the panel. A brilliant hurler. Um, you know, obviously the management team gave him time to think about his, his decision. But I know from a player, from a personal point of view, we'd have all liked to have, um, if he'd stayed around the panel. But he felt, you know, he wanted to commit to SARS, and he maybe he wasn't enjoying hurling as much as he was in previous years. So. Look, I think we have to respect his decision, but certainly we're disappointed to see him go. Mm, uh, question for you, um, Jay in Waterford, uh, for you, Porik. He wants to ask about Derek McGrath and the difference he's made since coming into the job. Yeah, look, I suppose this year we've seen a lot of improvements, obviously, in our performance wise, but Derek last year, you know, he put in a huge amount of work, and I think it's really reflecting on our performance this year, the work that I suppose. Derek would have done with us through the college scenes is really reflecting on our performance now and that spirit that we had I suppose he's really carrying into the senior setup now and I think um, with the amount of work the man is putting into it is just phenomenal like and we're, we're happy for him that we're, we're getting results at the moment. You know? how, how would you describe your style this season? I suppose it's just down to hard work really you know that's we're setting out when we go out to every game it's just about working hard and people are saying about our game plan and all that, but it's just down to hard work and if it means that you have to go back to field and to win ball, you just have to do it, you know. And I think our scores we're reflecting or we're putting up high scores too, like so it's not as if you know, it's the five points to six. You're not job, parking right? the bus. No, we're not parking the bus. No. We're 
when we have the ball, we're all out attacking, you know. So yeah, uh, how are you feeling about about the challenge Waterford present? Uh, no, I fully agree with Parik there. Like people say, they, they have a defensive style or approach, but I think it's more of an attitude. You know, they go out with the attitude that they're gonna outwork every team. You know, they're they're an intense team to play. Just watching on from the outside, you know, they get in a huge amount of tackles. They turn over possession quickly and they move the ball quickly. Like they've they're very good forwards up front then, and like Parik was saying, they run up huge scores. So. We're fully aware of the challenge that uh, faces us on Sunday, so it's something that we're going to have to prepare well for. you have any special plan for this man here beside you on Sunday? Uh, no, not nothing specific. Look, I think, you know, we try like that. No, it's going to be an attitude of the team and an approach to the game. So if we go fully focused, we won't target any individual player. Obviously, Parik spearheads their attack, so, but they've other quality forwards as well. So we're going to have a work cut out to, to keep them all under us. Mm, and and Parik, what about their attack? It's racking up some huge scores, some averages of 30-odd points a game. Any special treatment for them? Oh, look, sure. If you start singling out, you'll be there for the rest of the day, you know, and listening them out. So they're all going to take need as much watching as each other. So um, we'll have six backs, and they'll all whoever they're on now, they're going to they're going to have their hands he- are full. Yeah, I'm sure. Before we wrap it up, lads, a question for both of you. It's from uh, Marty. Is this season one of the most open you can remember? Um, from a league point of view, Just from every uh, point of view, uh, point of view, in um, terms of you know, a level playing field. Yeah, I think definitely. Look, I I still think Tipperary and Kilkenny are still setting the standard for everyone else. Certainly, the league there's a freshness to, freshness to it with ourselves and Watford um, contesting the final. But I think when it comes down to the business end, you'll still see the likes of Tipperary and Kilkenny there. So it's definitely the gap is closing on the top teams. Um, but again, I still think they're setting the standard for everyone else. Okay. Yeah, similar to Law Con, I suppose, Tip and Kilkenny. They're very are, agreeable to yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> They're obviously the two teams that everyone has to catch, you know, but I, as the gap is certainly closing, and I suppose the counties below them are starting to get a bit of belief, you know, and the likes of Wexford are on the way up, and even the likes of Leash and them, they're, they're certainly on the way up, and obviously ourselves then, we're trying to build momentum coming into the championship, you know, so it, the gaps are closing, but we're still going to be going out to get Tip and Kilkenny. And the cats aren't gone away, are they? No, they never go. <laughs> <laughs> Lads, thanks a million for joining us here this afternoon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Lorcan and for Pori. Now, all I can say now is thank you for all your support. Thanks for attending today's gathering. For everyone at home watching online, uh, thanks for sending in your questions. Really appreciate it. The game on Sunday at Semple Stadium, Waterford and Cork, 3.30 throw in at Semple Stadium, live on TG Car, also live coverage on RTE Radio 1, so we're all looking forward to that. And if the league is anything to go by, we're in for a very special year indeed in the world of hurling. So thanks again. Until next time, bye for now. All right, so done.